It's November 19th, 2014, and uh, we are in courtroom number 2B of the Adams County Courthouse. And the person that we are interviewing this morning is Larry W. Scheffler. And uh, Larry, tell us your birth date. Uh, May 4th, 1942. Okay, thank you. And attending the interview this morning are, is June Adi, our uh, certified court reporter. My name is Christopher Schultz. And of course, uh, Mr. Scheffler is uh, the person who we will be interviewing this morning. Uh, first question that we want to ask is what a war and branch of service did you participate in? I was with the uh, Illinois National Guard in the Army and I was in the Vietnam conflict or war, whichever you prefer. And uh, what rank did you hold while you were in Vietnam? I was a specialist fifth class. Okay and just uh, for the benefit of those that don't know what that means, can you describe about what what your job was and uh, uh, what type of was that a non-commissioned rank? Uh, actually, it is a non-com. Yeah, it's it's it would be equal to a uh, three star or a three stripes sergeant. Okay, and what was your specialty with that unit? With my with my unit, uh, my specialties that I was trained in throughout my career, so to speak, was. Uh, did not involve anything I did in Vietnam, basically. <laughs> I was trained for supply clerk and also as a field communications lineman in the Army. And then uh, when I went to Vietnam, I was attached to the Chulai Defense Command, which was, they was in charge of security throughout the compound. And uh, that's what I did. There was various jobs that come off that. I, I rode, uh, I was a shotgunner for uh, convoys. I rode uh, shotgun for uh, taking the Vietnamese workers back into the con to the city, to their hometown, and uh, I uh, worked the Chu Lai perimeter of defense throughout the compound, all around the compound, and I even stood stood uh, stood guard at the uh, at the uh, commander's. Uh, place there in July. When, when did you uh, enlist or were you drafted? I was not drafted. I joined the National Guard. I believe it was in 19, uh, <coughs> excuse me, 63, 1963. And uh, we went to, uh, we was called up in 1968 and did some stuff here in the United States in Fort Carson, Colorado. And from Fort Carson, Colorado, then we went to uh, 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 Vietnam. Hey, what what uh, caused you to decide to join the National Guard? Uh, a friend of mine was in the National Guard, and uh, not to beat around the bush or anything, but uh, my draft number, I didn't know what it was, but I, I kind of figured it was might be coming pretty soon, so I went ahead and joined the National Guard. Okay. Uh, and uh, what, did, what had you done prior to joining the National Guard? Uh, prior to the National Guard and everything like this here, I basically worked at Motorola uh, in an electronics company here in the city of Quincy. Do you have any interesting experiences from boot camp or basic training that you'd like to relate to uh, us? It was uh, quite an experience learning what the Army wanted you to do, what you could do, and uh, it was a disciplinary, I learned a lot of discipline in the Army. And uh, did you find that you, you your upbringing in Quincy uh, was, uh, gave you better capabilities at all than your other, or everybody was from this area, correct? Everybody was from this area, yes. Uh -huh. That's interesting. Uh, so what was the unit, did, did, did the, the unit that you enlisted in have a particular mission or uh, job that it was supposed to be doing? Yeah, there was a, we was a one, it was a 126 SNS, which is supply and service company, and we did various things. I mean, uh, we, we hauled stuff to different places and supplies, and, uh, 
and services. We did uh, anything that like motor pool. We had motor pools, worked on vehicles and stuff like this. We did uh, a lot of different things. Where did you go after basic training? After basic training, I stayed in uh, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri for AIT, which was field communication school. How long did that take? Uh, that was somewhere in the vicinity of about nine weeks. How was your experience there? Uh, I was scared to death. Why is that? Hate heights and had to climb up 45 foot telephone poles. And if I was real good at it, which I wasn't, because I didn't like heights, but if I was real good at it and if I was t one of the top ones in my class, I got to go to Fort Benning, Georgia, where they was 90 foot. <laughs> so I was not one of the best. <laughs> <laughs> what did you wind up doing then? Uh, well, what I wound up wound up doing, I, they sent me home after AIT and everything, mm -hmm. and then I joined my unit here. And then we, uh, I was, I was in fuel communications when we went to summer camps, and on any kind of uh, different things that we went out on uh, during the meetings or something for the weekend. And uh, I would, uh, I would practice my craft that I learned in the in the army on that on fuel communications. So. We, we is it correct to say that you were not on active duty for some time or were you what was your status no for the first uh, uh 1968 from 1963 to 68 uh, i was not on active duty except for basic training in ait which is about six months and uh when you were not doing uh National Guard duty. What 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 did you do in that interim time period before going to Vietnam? Uh, I went to work back when I got back and everything. I went back to work for uh, uh, Motorola. Okay, and when when were you called back to active duty? Uh, in uh, nineteen, I believe it was nineteen, early nineteen sixty eight. And what 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 caused that? What precipitated that? It was a, well, supposedly a declaration of. There was a big call up sending us over there for the 10 offensive and stuff, and also a big call up of, uh, of uh, trying to end the war. And uh, was that the entire unit that was called to? Our entire leave? unit. Our entire unit was uh, called up, and we had to take physicals. And there was there was a few that didn't make it as far as physical wise, but not very many of those was turned down. So basically, our whole unit, yes, was gone. We they activated all of us. Where did you go immediately after being activated? Act, after we was activated and everything, uh, uh, we went to Fort Carson, Colorado, and did our uh, pre-training at Fort Carson, Colorado. How long did that take? I think that was in the vicinity of uh, four months. And what, what kind of training did they give you there? Uh, training to, that dealt with a lot of a lot of schooling as to uh, what to expect when you got over there, how to act when you got over there, uh, different things that may you may encounter. Uh, basically, what it, and, and of course, naturally, your weapons. You had to re relearn your weapons because we used different weapons over there than we did here. And uh, so it was. It was kind of like uh, advanced course of basic, basic training. And what was your? How'd you like that? Uh, well, <laughs> I had a wife, one child, and one child on the way. There was a little bit of. Uh, I was. I didn't especially like it real well, but I. I joined up, and so I felt that I ought to fulfill my obligation to the country. So that's is that the way most people. That was my it? attitude. Was I, I I did what come first, and that was my country. So and is that the attitude of most of the members of your most unit? of our guys in our unit? Yes, there was some that was sour, but uh, that you know that I wasn't one of them. Were you able to train and be deployed as a unit with the rest of the guys from Quincy? Yes, we was. Uh -huh. We all deployed it. Uh, well, with the with the the only difference was they had an advance party who left a couple of weeks before we did, 
and that was to take our equipment over and unload them at the ships and that so they was there a little bit before we before we deployed but they were members of your unit they was also. members of our unit yes were you eventually united with them yes we was and we was united in uh, Da Nang Vietnam okay and Da Nang was uh, that a big base over yes there? yes uh -huh. and uh, from Da Nang how, how long did you stay at Da Nang Da Nang I think our, our next orders come we's probably there a week week or so and then we we uh, went to uh, July okay uh -huh. and how long was your unit stationed at July July was from uh, I'd say we was there 10 months was that unusual for your unit comprised as it was of all local boys to be together like that well uh, as I recall it was unusual uh, normally they don't like to take uh, a lot of brothers, cousins, and close relation together, you know. And but our, in our unit, we had uh, somewhere between five and ten close blood relation, you know, like brothers or uh, cousins, first cousins, and stuff like this. We had, we had that. And but yeah, it was unusual. Did it help sharing that bond of? everybody coming from the same community and being familiar with each other yes it did did we was used to what we was all we was used to what we was all used to we knew how each of us was we didn't have to worry about somebody coming into the unit with the exception of some that they assigned to us and everything and not knowing them not knowing what they're capable of doing and stuff like this here and of course there were so many brothers and cousins and stuff like this here that uh, they they did have the opportunity to break them up and everything, but none of ours chose to do so. We did, all chose to stick together. Did that set, set you apart in any way from the other units that were stationed at Chu Lai? Yes, we was very mature and knew what life was about. We weren't real young, but we was all mature, and uh, yes, it helped tremendously. So by and large, your unit were actually guys that had been trained but had gone back into the community started their families had jobs and uh had a little more uh no. knowledge of the world yes yes how did that assist you in helping to defend uh, the chu lai uh, base well as far as helping we all like we are like i said we all knew our jobs we all did our jobs and uh there wasn't a lot of I mean everybody everybody was focused on their jobs did uh, the base come under fire or uh, assault by the enemy at that time we had a lot of rocket rocket fire and we had a lot of uh, uh, sniper fire on the perimeters and uh, yes we did come up with uh, matter of fact our first night we was there we was hit with rockets and uh, quite an experience there we we all headed for the bunkers and and uh, our little defense posts and everything like this here but it was uh, yeah we had we had quite a quite a bit of it yeah did your unit suffer casualties while you were at the Chi only Lai? casualties was none none uh, none in our unit come into combat that we had that might have died none of that was due to combat what about the the mission of the Chu Lai base? What 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 were you what was what were you really doing there? I know you were in support of the operations, mm -hmm. but what was the operation? Well, the operation, uh, as far as I could ever figure out, was uh, was there was infantry there. It was, it was we was, there was the Americal division, is what they called the division that we was was there with, and we was attached to the Americal division, and they had infantry, artillery. Uh, they had LZs, which is a landing zone for aircraft to come in and stuff like this and, and re resupply and stuff. And uh, that's where most of your uh, your heavy gunfire was and stuff like this here. But you know, they had a little bit of everything. So their mission was was uh, spread out quite a bit. And was that to hold and secure the territory surrounding the base? Yes. Uh -huh. and, and do you know what the geographic location of Chu Lai was? 
with regard to the top of my head uh, we was in the uh, uh, we was closer to the we was pretty fairly close to the DMZ a little bit farther north from Saigon uh, yes uh -huh. what interactions while you were at Chu Lai did you have with the with the Vietnamese people uh, we had in our company area uh, of which I uh, wasn't there all the time due to my my job there's a lot of it on the bunkers and stuff like that and then out going on LZ runs and, and, and stuff like that uh, overnight maybe a couple of days depends on when you get back when you could get back on the road because of the uh, of the mortars and stuff like that that they had and they also had these uh, uh, explosives in the in the road to try to knock us out and stuff like that so but uh, uh, I seem to have lost my train of thought of that question well I guess what uh, the, the, the question was were you able to get outside the perimeter and oh. mix and mingle kind of with, yeah. the, with the Vietnamese folks yes. in the villages and that type of thing I was uh, I was able to do that when I went into the village and rode shotgun for the uh, for the chaplain and different things like that. When we took the workers back into the village, I rode shotgun there too, and so I got to intermingle with some of them. Also, we had workers uh, that did uh, clean the hooches, and a hooch is nothing more than a uh, your living quarters, but uh, or a barracks, and we had people to come in to do that. We had people to come in to do our uh, a lot of odd jobs and stuff like this here. So I I intermingled with most of them the best I could with the language barrier and stuff. And what did you find remarkable or interesting about the Vietnamese people that you interacted with? Uh, I found a lot of things so to speak, remarkable about them in the, in the fact is of the way they they, they went through li their life and everything like this with nothing but uh, war and stuff like this and how they kept going and and uh, uh, different, th just different things like I just, I was kind of uh, impressed with them. Was there ever any concern about infiltration by the North Vietnamese? Uh, in the base or you know in the village where you uh where, you know where the people lived well in the villages where the people lived and everything when i, I learned when i was going into there with the chaplain most of the time I, I learned a little bit uh the people in there was uh, uh scared of the vietnamese north vietnamese uh they uh, uh they would they would not talk to us sometimes when they had been intimidated by uh, Viet Cong or, or the Vietnamese, North Vietnamese, uh, due to the fact is that they, they was fully under threats against their relation, their sons, their daughters, their families, and stuff like this. Especially the uh, uh, the ones that had uh, uh, higher positions in the village, like like you would say they're the town mayor and and people that kind of run the, the town, you know, and everything. They would all the time. Uh, give us indicators that uh, it was not good to talk to us and wouldn't talk to us and just things like that you know did was there any uh, any ever any problems with sabotage or uh, within the base or by infiltrators uh, not that I was aware of at our time mm -hmm. But uh, did the Chu Lai base come upon regular small-scale attack? Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, we had a, a, a we had a large hospital there and everything, and and they would always send uh, rockets in, trying to hit places where they could, you know, inflict casualties. Did you arrived there after the Tet Offensive? Uh, I think Tent was right around then. Yeah. Did. Uh, did your unit ever uh, have to leave the perimeter to be involved in a counterattacks or anything like that? Well, not not uh, the compound itself. No, the only time you would ever do that is when you had small arms fire or something like that at night, or when 
the mortars or rockets would come in, then you'd have to go to your positions in the outlying part of the of, of, of the company area, so to speak. And Did uh, part of your duties include the overnight yes. guard duty, that type of thing? Mine, I was, I was like, uh, <coughs> I would work maybe 24 hours in a bunker and maybe off eight to 12 hours and back at it again. There was three of us assigned to the bunker. And you would have been then in charge for the security of the yeah. perimeter of that part of the yes. space? Yes. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Was that stressful? <laughs> well, at times it was. It depends on what type of, uh, uh, of alert you might have been on, you know. So if it, was a, if it was a green alert, that means things didn't look, intelligence tells you that there's not much going on. You know, just keep, keep two guys going and one guy can sleep a little bit. Why? And the yellow was proceed with caution, something could possibly happen. And of course the red alert was when, when stuff was coming in and, and uh, that of course naturally everybody was at full alert then. So. Uh, can you tell us uh, what type of individual or unit accommodations or uh, awards your unit received for its service in Vietnam? I can only tell you that uh, we had two Bronze Star members that got bronze stars for bravery. And one of them was uh, Gail Ortker and the other one was my cousin, Kenny Scheffler. They, uh, they both got bronze stars. And then uh, you would have received, obviously, uh, awards for serving in the theater of operations and that type of thing. Yes, we would mm -hmm. get the mandatory stuff for being over there, yeah. What about um, downtime? What, what, what did you do to, for entertainment over there? Well, I always wanted to go see Bob Hope, but that never happened. So, because I was on duty that night, it naturally, it's, it's a big alert. But uh, other than that, they had, uh, in the company area, they would have a, a projection set up and they would have a movie occasionally. And uh, we did have a, a beer garden, so, uh, so to speak, a beer garden and uh, spend a little time over there on your downtime and getting a good night's sleep after a good night at the beer garden was it was easier that way you know so <laughs> what about uh any unusual characters uh in your unit or at that base that you remember or unusual incidents that didn't involve necessarily combat uh not really. I, like I said, I was in and out all the time. So, uh, we were looking at some of your photographs, and most of them are from July. A couple were from Da Nang. Uh -huh. Were those taken before you were assigned to July? The ones in Da Nang was yes. Did uh -huh. you have uh, any other locations where you were assigned uh, after July, or well? Myself personally, we didn't, but we had uh, we had other members of our unit was assigned to places like uh, one of them. One of them was Duck Fo, D U C F O U, I do believe. One of them was that, and uh, then I think in also in in Quang Tree, we had uh, some people assigned to that. But myself personally, I never. I never got reassigned to any other place. And um, how long did you spend at Chu Lai? Well, I was thinking somewhere in the vicinity of probably eight, ten months, something like that. And that was without a break or a leave to oh, travel well, elsewhere? We had R&R, uh, &R, which is rest and recuperation. Uh, I went to Hawaii for that, but I met my wife over in Hawaii, myself and my friend, my buddy, and his wife. So does that involve hopping on a flight out of Da Nang to yes. Hawaii and then back? Yes. About how long was that? I, I'm thinking it was five days. It seemed like a day or two, but and uh, 
did you know how long you were going to be stationed at Chu Lai? No. Uh, in the Army, you can be shipped out any time to someplace else, you know, but uh, we just felt that that was our that was our company area and everything, so we'd probably be there for most of the duration, you know. And do you know what brought about your uh, transfer back home from Chu Lai? Well, the war was winding down somewhat, and they and they decided that it was time to get out. And uh, then they started bringing back people, and uh, we happened to be some of the luckier ones to get to come back earlier. And that was in 1969. Yes. Uh huh. And uh, to your knowledge, did the base at Chu Lai remain open, or? Well, uh, I can tell you right now, it's not under American control no longer. No. In fact, we've had we had a a couple of guys go back to revisit that area, and it was off limits. I mean, they could not get back in there. And if you go into your uh, computer and try to find out things about July, you won't find nothing. So something, uh, and I don't know what it is, but there's something in there probably now that nobody wants you to see. So. Have you been back to Vietnam since no, then? No, I, 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 I wouldn't mind going back, but if I can't go back where I was in July and stuff like this here, I don't know if it would be uh, it would be the same, you know. What were your feelings when you learned you were going to go back home? Well, uh, couldn't beat that. I was elated. <laughs> and uh, were you given a lot of advance notice about going back home? Uh, I'd say we was given somewhere in the vicinity of a couple of weeks or so or better. And was the entire unit then shipped back home? Yes. Uh, or you flew back home? Yeah. Uh, and then we brought, uh, we had some of our, some of our members was even assigned to uh, infantry and they was out in the brush and uh, they even got to come back into the company area into stage what they called staging to get ready to come back and they would come back and uh, we all we all come over together and all those that was there went back together. So some of the members of the company while they were at Chu Lai were actually assigned into the infantry units that were stationed yes. there? Uh -huh. And do you know why or what the basis was for that? Uh, that was that was their MOS's when they was in the they was attached to our unit here but that was their MOS's as infantry and so when you say MOS that's what they were trained to do yes that was their training uh -huh. that was their job description okay and the gentlemen the gentlemen that got the brown stars were they the ones that no were... they was in our attached unit okay do you know what brought about those awards for those gentlemen well I know that there was a uh, attack on their convoy and uh, there was uh, there were some casualties, and I know that the casualties, uh, our two guys went in uh, and uh, opened fire on the enemy and, 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 and uh, uh, picked up a couple of wounded, and I'm sure there was several dead, uh, from what I understood there was anyway. And, and that type of convoy, that's the same thing that you were driving in on a regular basis too? It was, yes. So you was it just... Could that have. was that happened to be the for a bit, well, want of a better term the luck of the draw that well that could have been but I was on a different they were stationed in uh, Duck Fo, uh, mm -hmm. and that's why they was running convoys out of Duck Fo, and I, we was running ours out of July. Okay, was Duck Fo nearby or it was within forty miles I believe. So it was still up there near the yeah. DMZ. Uh -huh. uh, after you came back, were you? Then deactivated and went back to regular civilian life. When we got back, I was I was asked if I would like to rejoin, and I had uh, I think I had one month left of my six-year obligation, and I said I stated to them that I would not uh, want to rejoin. Did you have a job? I did have you? Motorola. I went back to Motorola right away. Okay. So that was back in the days when they were building TV sets. TVs, and, phonographs, yeah, transistor radios. Yeah, they was. What did you do at Motorola? 
I was a, a spot checker on the line. I, I was an inspector. I checked all the phonographs and everything like this to make sure that they was of quality and then put my stamp of approval on them and then they, they got boxed up and were sent elsewhere. Did your uh, days in service, uh, do you think it affected your outlook, your abilities, your your life when you got back? Was it changed? It it had to the point was I couldn't take, I, I, I didn't uh, like taking orders from from others uh, and I, I made a move and, and uh, I got my own business at that time in the, in the service station business and uh, and then uh, I left Motorola and went took that job and, and carried on the rest of my life. So this backtracking for a second, <coughs> who was your commanding officer for your unit? Our commanding officer was Captain Donald Kyle. Is that around Pace in Illinois? Okay. Like you mentioned that it was a little bit more difficult to take orders from everybody once yeah. you got back, but uh, obviously uh, you got along capably well with your commanding officer while you were in oh, yeah, yeah, July. Yeah, yeah. Well, by that taking orders, I mean I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want somebody breathing down my neck and stuff like right. this. I was, you know, I didn't want no more. I didn't want none of that. So. Right. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add about your military experiences or your experiences in civilian life after that? No, my experiences in, in my civilian life has been, as far as I can see, has been fairly good. I'm pretty good health and everything, and uh, and my experiences in, in with, you know, like I said, I signed up for an obligation. Uh, it was country first, family second, and uh, at that particular time, so. Uh, uh, everything's turned out great. I mean, I've got 14 grandchildren, four great-grandchildren, four kids. What, what else could you ask for? Well, we certainly <laughs> appreciate uh, you sharing your experiences with you, and uh, of course we appreciate your service to our country. So unless there's anything else that you'd like to add, uh, we'll go ahead and conclude the interview. Thank you. That's it. All right. I didn't.